What's going on everyone? Brian's here. It's the first full trading week of October 2020. Now, unlike my previous trading videos, this one is not an in-depth recap, trade analysis, or it's not about the futures or anything like that. I'm just looking to highlight a very simple yet effective and powerful trading strategy. It's not one in which I created or anything. I just tweaked it as well as created my own list of criteria for what makes it more of a high probability trade or a high probability setup. I'm sharing with you guys because again, I think it's a great one to add to anyone's playbook. And here it is. It's whenever an EMA crosses over your VWAP. We're looking at the three minute time frame intraday. In this particular case, we're looking at the SPY, but the taker is irrelevant. Using the SPY based on today's price action because it's a great case study. Now, in order for the probability of this pattern to play out stronger, you want to look for a stock that has gapped up but not necessarily just gapped up if it's been trending down for the previous few days the, the more days in which it's been trending down even better when it gaps up especially if it gaps up over the previous days high the reason being if you know anything about shorts you know they'll start covering if a trade is not going in their favor and when shorts are covering it means they are buying back shares which is going to add to the momentum of this long trade. It's a momentum based setup and it means you're going to trade in the direction of the momentum or in the direction of the gap. I'm only highlighting a gap up, but this trade also works when a stock gaps down. Next, if you'll notice, I have pre-market data turned on and off because you do not want pre-market information to interfere with where VWAP currently is, as well as where an EMA is. You want it to update quickly without accounting for the pre-market information or the after hours information. So if we zoom in right here to just today and I'll stretch out the chart so we can see it a little bit more in detail. What we have here is the initial opening push was a very strong bullish one and then you don't necessarily want to enter in right there you want to wait for a retracement as well as wait for the ema to catch up to price action what makes it even better is when you find confluence with your fibonacci so if you change to your fibonacci tool it doesn't matter what platform in which you're using this is think or swim but using the fibonacci tool if you take the low of day and you extend it up to the high of that push, you want to generally see a 50% retracement, and that's this level right here. If that 50% retracement happens, it could be 50% or the 61% retracement. You know, this is it, these this is the stock market, so not everything is perfect or to the tick, and you shouldn't be necessarily looking for the exact penny in which something is going to reverse. You just want it to be in this general idea, and then you want to see buyers start stepping in. You can use any other type of confluence in which you want. If you're looking at candlesticks, you'll want to see some sort of wick rejection. You'll want to see a spinning top, a doji. Anything that's going to help you feel that the trade is going to continue in the direction in which you think it's going. It can be you reading the tape. It can be you looking at level two. Just look for some sort of confirmation in that regard, but know that you have the EMA coming up. And again, this is the nine EMA. I use the nine EMA with the three minute candlestick because three goes into nine perfectly. It goes into it three times. I don't know if there's any other special reason for that being, but that's just what I've always used five minutes is too long and one minute is a little too fast three is right in the middle it's a good sweet spot the three minute candlestick is something i adopted from a trader that had many more years of trading experience than me and i fell in love with it because before that i was trading exclusively off the one minute time frame the five minute always felt pretty slow but then i realized the five minute is also important for identifying patterns intraday but this is our buy area right here and once the ema catches up you can take a starter position here but the trade actually initiates once you get the cross right here. So this EMA cross over VWAP is where you can get confirmation that the momentum is really taking, is really, is really picking up. Now in an ideal situation, the candles will not close below the EMA. It will continue to ride and you can use the first close below the EMA as your exit. So in other words, you can build your position down here. This is your confirmation to add. Again, you can look for confluences across the board. You can add as you take out the new high a day, or you can use this as your PT, depending on how conservative or aggressive of a trader you are. But just know that you don't need to go flat the position until price breaks this nine EMA. Again, it's a very simple and effective trading strategy. Real confirmation comes in whenever you see volume ticking up whenever the cross happens. So if we have this cross here, this is not this is nothing, you know, to be too excited about. But again, this is the spy. So generally we might not see 
insane spikes in volume unless there's some sort of a news catalyst some sort of algorithmic pop or drop or anything like that or if it's the high the the open or the close is where you'll generally generally see some extreme spike or during power hour this wasn't an extremely volatile morning for the spy if we just zoom out and look at how the past few days have been we're dealing with a very choppy market right now we're dealing with uh, trump coronavirus news he was in the hospital overnight after testing positive for covid 19 and he was supposed to be released and traders came in this day with news that he was going to be released towards the end of the day it's now i'm recording this after the market is closed so he was actually released and supposedly returned back to the white house and this day we did get a cross right here but instead of showing you guys just a spy let's just pull up some other examples from today here we have apple if we just zoom into the past three days what do we have we have this downtrend from friday uh, let's just draw the downtrend in and we can see Apple gapped up over it, it ticked down, came back up, but then it held. It was just digesting this move until the EMA caught up and it started holding price and it just continued to ride it until it broke down here. This is the type of gen this is generally what you want to see. If we just look at just today's price action, you can see how clean of a pattern this is to spot. We'll go to another stock. Let's see. Here we have AMD from today. If we just zoom in, here goes our cross. It, it came a little bit later in AMD because there was a lot more momentum for AMD. But the but the signs in which you want to pay attention to is just this right here. Again, the previous day, if the stock was trending down, as we can see, AMD was down yesterday, down right here. It gapped up. Shorts should be covering. You don't necessarily need to wait for the EMA to catch up as you can see in this example you would have been getting into this trade relatively very late this which is why i started with the spy it's more of an ideal case scenario but just know whenever you get this type of cross you can take a trade and then just use the nine ema as your stop just keep raising it up you can use your stop below vwap again circumstances are different if you think it's going to be a stock that might trend for a couple of days it's very discretionary at that point, but for this particular trade, you're using the nine EMA as your stop. Once the first three minute candle closes below the nine, that's when you stop out. Let's see if we can find any other examples. Here's here's Amazon from today. Again, it was downtrending on Friday and then it gapped up today. Here comes our cross with the EMA over VWAP and then price gets and then price pushes up. In Amazon's case, we had a very explosive candlestick right here. Uh, jumping jump back to the spy real quick just so you guys see this is what made the spy an ideal scenario for me because you guys know i love the fibonacci retracement i love the fibonacci retracement so i'm already looking to take a position usually whenever i see a 50 percent retracement after a nice big igniting candle but when it's after a gap up day that's even better and then once i see this cross it makes you feel even better about the trade now now i said i was going to show you guys in the five minute time frame so let's just take a look at that real quick here we have the spy again on the five minute time frame. You guys can see how it's not as clean. At this point, the nine EMA becomes a little too slow of an indicator for me at least. The three, it hugs it a little bit closer, but as you guys can see here, the cross doesn't happen until all the way as late as 10.15. That's way too late to be getting in this trade. A scalper will actually be using a strategy like this on a one minute time frame because the one minute candles hug the nine EMA pretty closely. I have friends that are very aggressive scalpers and I know them to use that strategy. I don't know if they use the cross over VWAP in their strategies, but for the one minute time frame with the nine EMA, there's some great strategies out there. I personally don't really use that as i'm really scalping but i just wanted to show you guys what this looks like on the five minute time frame and if we weren't using any type of uh emas or smas or vwap or anything like that there's still this huge igniting candle right here the first five minute push we still get a nice pullback to the 50 percent retracement you can call this a spinning top candle which sometimes tends to point to a reversal sign and so forth you get a nice bounce right here and then the stock continues to go so if you were just taking this trade just off of price action and actually going to hide all of the studies you can see that this in itself right here is a great trade just looking at the price action let's actually just go back to the three minute chart and let's look at the pre-market information we'll turn we're going to take this uh fibonacci off and let me just turn on show extended hours and let's come in here and you can see how here we have some pre-market highs also lines up with this level let's look at 
AMD. What do we have here? As that's another trade in itself for some people's playbooks, a break over the pre-market highs. We can see AMD cracked the pre-market high within the first couple minutes. That could have been a reason which it was running a lot more aggressively, as well as we looked at Amazon. Let's pull that up. Here was a pre-market high. I mean, Amazon's price action is usually pretty choppy anyway, but you can see that this is pretty ugly with the pre-market data on. It's very, the EMA is all over the place and the VWAP is pretty, you know, crazy. <laughs> if we look at Apple, here was our pre-market high. We had some pre-market resistance right here, but let's just look at our nine EMA. You see how it's a little bit hard to see if you're trading this strategy versus if we were to turn our uh, pre-market data off. You guys see where the pre-market levels are now versus where this happens based on this cross. So we'll jump back to the SPY. This is the pre-market level. This is the pre-market level. We can see how it's already an area of interest, but then when we look at other stocks like AMD, the pre-market level is all the way down here. So if you're just taking an opening drive scalp and you're trying to enter on the break over the pre-market high, which is a very, very popular strategy, this in this case is coming in much later and you're kind of missing out on already a great entry. So just like most strategies, it's not the only entry. I'm just pointing out a good one. Let's just look at one more example. Here's the Qs, which would be the NASDAQ. Here comes our cross. And then we had a nice little push and then here comes the first close below the nine EMA gap up after it was trending down. Again, a lot of the stocks that we looked at are on the NASDAQ and the SPY. So obviously they're going to be very similar to the price action and which happened in these ETFs. Now let's just look at what these things look like on the daily time frame. Looking, looking at the SPY in a daily time frame, we can see that we also gapped up over the 50-day SMA, and the gap up was not significant. It was only you know 0.6% or so, 0.6.2% on the SPY, so it wasn't necessarily an insane gap up. A huge one is not needed. Now before, now before I conclude this video, I, we're just looking back at the SPY in the five-minute time frame. I forgot to mention why it's also important to look at the five-minute time frame. A lot more traders use the five minute time frame over the three minute time frame, which means if you find candlestick patterns that up, that appear here, as well as the candlestick formations, if you see an inverted hammer, if you see a hammer, if you see a, you know, a, a gravestone doji, if you see a spinning top on a five minute time frame, that means a lot more people are seeing that. So you'll generally get a better or bigger trade versus the three minutes. So that's the one downside. Just know if you're going to adopt a trading strategy using the three minute time frame, just be aware that you might want to keep eyes on the five minute time frame also for when that candle closes because more people are seeing that. But switching back to our three minute time frame, just to really pinpoint our accurate entry, we can say we would be scaling in right around here because as we said with our Fibonacci's, we would have already known this is the 50% retracement as well as the, the EMA is catching up. Now, if we're adding into this position, we'll call it, you know, we're building the position at 940, 9.57 into 10 a.m. And, you know, we'll call it all the way up until 10.05, 10.06. And we're looking to close the position out over here. We'll call it at 11.09 if this is the strategy in which you're using. So you're sitting in this trade essentially from here to here for 23 minutes. And the SPY moved almost a whole percent in that time frame. So we're exiting the trade. We'll call it at 11.10 just to keep it simple. Just to keep it simple, I want to pull up. I want to pull up some options. We're going to look at the strike price. We'll call it. You know, today is Monday. I'm recording now. I'm recording this video on Monday, but we'll look at some Wednesday expirations for the spy. I won't even bother looking at the same day expirations, just because I don't. Just because the Wednesdays would have been a little bit safer for this trade. So let's try. So let's pull up a strike price right now. And looking at the options chain right now, we're looking at the Wednesday expirations, and we see these contracts right here had high open interest. And we can assume at that time, again, the market is closed. So I didn't have this, the market is closed. So I'm sorry, I can't show you guys what it would have looked like early in the morning, but I can tell you the open interest was also high right here. We're just looking at this contract, which would be the 340 strike because the open interest is pretty high. This also has high open interest, but this is very far out the money. We would have been able to see this much volume at the time, but as you guys can see, this ended up being the contract with the most volume because a lot of traders are also thinking the same thing. If we pull this contract up on a chart and let's just see what it looks like. 
here we have it and as we said we would have been scaling into our position around 10 o'clock so we'll say let's just say our average fill was at right over here you can see the price a dollar we'll call it a dollar 25 is the time we would have been full size just to keep it simple and we're exiting the position as we said at about 11 uh, 10 we'll call it to keep it even so right here is 11 10 that is a 42 percent we'll just call it 40 percent gain in you know a great morning trade and you would have been comfortable in it because you would have just been trading based on this ema and if you just follow the rule of closing in the position once you break down below the nine ema or close below the nine ema it depends on how it depends on also what type of trader you are if you just really want to lock in profits you might have been out here but just know sometimes it will wick below it wait for the three minute candle to close hopefully this video helps let me know down below if you want more of just you know very strategy based driven content this is one straight out of my playbook that's why i'm sharing with you guys i'm aware of a lot i have friends that have all different sorts of you know trading strategies i'm sharing with you guys one of my personal favorite ones straight from my playbook book just pay attention to the criteria is the stock gapping up or gapping down as well as is it gapping up in the opposite direction is it gapping in the opposite direction of how it's been moving for the previous days in this case the previous days the stock was trending down and it happened to gap up if you were looking for a short trade that means the stock would have been going up and then it gapped down if that makes sense so hopefully this helps you guys leave a comment down below if you have any questions and again let me know if you want to see more content like this sort of beginner based strategies thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace